Hi, welcome to Astro Babble. I'm Donna from Donna B Astrology. And I'm Linda from Scullywag Astrology. And today we are going to be talking about the the year ahead forecast and all the major transits that are going to be happening for the sign of Taurus. And if you are wondering about which sign you should be listening to, uh, Linda and I did a podcast earlier on that Um that would tell you, you should be listening to your, your rising sign. And if you don't know your rising sign, you can either email Linda or I, or go to her website and generate your, your chart. If you have all of your birth information, that's t- the time, the date as as well as the place. So mm-hmm. yes. this is for Taurus, the year ahead and all of the major transits we're going to be having. Yes. I am a Taurus well, rising. Yes, I was just about to say, Donna's really excited about this because she's a Taurus <laughs> or a Taurus. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> this is in presentation mode. Fantastic. Great. Um, well, the first planet we are going to be talking about is Mercury. And Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. It is the fastest planet. It moves the quickest. It will go around. And we are going to have three retrograde, um, typically, Mercury uh demonstrates three retrograde periods i think we're going to be squeaking out like a little bit of a fourth because we're just going to be finishing up the fourth or the first retrograde um at the just on january 1st so that's that's kind of how it's sneaking into our our lives um mercury is in charge of how we communicate how we travel um our our close uh, how we write uh um weights and measures it's um finance yeah mercury is mainly associated with communications so though communications thinking learning uh it's also agility like you know walking it's our hands it's also is it our arms i think too i think it is mm. But yeah, when most people think of Mercury, we're usually talking about communication, so thinking and learning. Um, yeah, the first kind of full retrograde in uh, twenty twenty four will be from the first of April, and it will be retrograde uh, to the twenty fifth of April, and that will be happening in the sign of Aries in your twelfth house. The twelfth house is uh, associated with. Uh, our undoing it's also places of confinement like prisons or hospitals places of retreat like monasteries or you know just even locking yourself away or just being less social it's a place of exile so that can mean that you literally are far away from home or it can be just away from your usual routine Uh, so yeah this retrograde, you know, maybe if, because Mercury retrogrades can often be associated with miscommunications, with snafus, with mix-ups, with, you know, the planet of communications is going backwards. So, you know, it's giving us a chance to review and uh, look at these topics again, you know, and not that we necessarily wanted to it's kind of we're being almost forced to because you know this has happened so we've got to readdress it you know we've got to reapply we've got a it's great time for editing that sort of stuff um but yeah in the 12th house you may be going back maybe you've gone on a spiritual retreat in the past and maybe this is a time where you're doing it again or Maybe, you know, you were somehow associated with hospital or uh, a prison in some fashion, whether you were a patient or an inmate or whether you were working there. Uh, Maybe you have people from that part of your life. Maybe they crop up after you haven't seen them for a while. It could be um, also addictions and self-defeating habits or escapism. It could be maybe this is when you take up smoking again or something, or maybe this is a time when you are actually trying to overcome that and you're attempting to um, overcome that habit again, which would be really good because this is anything that's a re 
redo, reapply, retry. So if you're trying to kick a habit and, you know, you haven't been successful in the past, maybe this will be the time. And then by August 4th, um, Mercury is going to station retrograde in Virgo. And it's it'll move all the way back into Leo, which is going to be your fourth house. So it's going to retrograde in your fifth house. And it's going to move back into your fourth house in Leo, August 28th. And, you know, this is going to, this is going to have a lot to do with those readjusting between things you create in your home. So that's where the the retrograde energy is going to be taking place is in your fourth and fifth houses. And those are your, your house of creativity as well as your home. So you may want to repaint that front porch or (laughs) something about that time. Yeah. And it can even be like when it's in the fourth, maybe long lost relatives popping up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, with the last uh, retrograde of the year, we have from the 25th of November until the 15th of December, we have Mercury retrograding in Sagittarius, which is your eighth house. And this can be a little bit of an icky house. This is the house of other people's money, shared finances and resources. This includes things like, you know, financial agreements, you know, joining your income or your finances with somebody else, whether that's um, a business partner or a romantic partner. It can be your partner's money, might not have anything to do with you. Or it's things like taxes and insurance and inheritances. So this can be mix-ups, confusions, de- yeah, delays to do with those matters as well. So, you know, maybe you thought that that inheritance was going to come through, but you find that somebody's contested the will or you thought that the loan was approved, but you didn't fill out this paperwork or maybe somebody else didn't fill that out. Maybe they didn't um, forward it on to whoever needed to approve it. So there's a delay. You've got to go back and re-sign. Mercury retrogrades tend to not be like huge dramas. It's just irritating, kind of like, ugh, you know, I've got to go back and do that again. You know, I remember one Mercury retrograde and it was in the sixth house and it was like, you know, had to go get some sort of, what was it, Um, scan done but forgot the actual paperwork for it. So, you know, had to go back home to get it. You know, just nothing major, just irritating. But it moves really, really fast. It does. Faster than the next planet, which is Venus. Venus is the the second planet from the sun. (laughs) And she's going to be on the move. She is going to be moving into Capricorn January 23rd. This is going to be in your ninth house. So, you know, you can do those things that those Venusian things, you might meet somebody um, from another country that you might have fallen in love with because Venus is in charge of, you know, those those aspects of your life where there's love and there's art, beauty, um, social, the social, the social game, the social, you know, uh, parts of, of your life. That's what Venus rules. So in the ninth house, it's a it's a benefic. This is um, this is a, a a very gentle house. I'm thinking it, it it's it it doesn't have a lot of activity. It's not on the angles. It's it's the ninth house, and the ninth house is 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 your house of of the higher education. Um, things might be coming good for to you in 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 either higher education or publishing law this might work for you if you are a Taurus rising. Yes. And from February 16th, Venus will move into Aquarius in your 10th house. So the 10th house is associated with our career and public reputation. It's what you're known for. So this is great. I mean, Venus does tend to bring nice things, you know, doesn't need to be massive or anything, but it also makes things just more harmonious usually. You know, there's a bit of grace and charm usually with uh, Venus. So in Aquarius, it might be you're just getting along well with superiors because the 10th house is also authorities, which can be bosses. Um, 
just things might just go a lot more smoother at work. People might find you a little bit more charming, easier to get along with. Uh, and for some, maybe there's romance somehow related to either public reputation or your career. So, hmm. Very cool. And on March 11th, Venus is going to be moving into Pisces and she's exalted here. So she's going to have some strength. And this is the house of your your hopes and dreams, your friends, your associations and your groups. And this is, so you will have benefit or you, you should be able to see some benefit um, associated with this, this house, even, even though Saturn's sitting in it, (laughs) but when (laughs) Venus moves into it, she's going to, she's going to elbow her way in and she's going to, she's going to give you some benefits. (laughs) Well, I mean, at least Venus is, she's exalted in Pisces. So there is that. And I mean, you know, this can bring that stability to relationships or art or beauty, whatever you want related to that. So, you know, it can, Saturn can kind of chill a little bit. So, you know, it could go either way. Um, But yeah, I mean, she is exalted. So she's in a much more powerful position than Saturn in that she's, uh, got better essential dignity whereas Saturn's not particularly strong in Pisces uh from happen on March 11th so that'll be good (laughs) uh from the 4th of April Venus moves into Aries and Venus isn't comfortable here it's a sign ruled by Mars and not only that it's in your 12th house of your undoing so yeah this is a house associated with, as I said, your undoing. It's also places of confinement. It's behind the scenes. So for some, this could be, you know, a secret affair or not necessarily something taboo or whatever. It could be just you're taking time out and you're keeping it a lot more quiet. It could be working behind the scenes on something uh, artistic or somehow related to Venus. Could be, you know secret social groups could be (laughs) are you going to join a cult (laughs) no that would be like this i you know if you're uh if you are involved in a play i could definitely see you know the the taurus risings you know doing that behind the scenes work the Mm -hmm. you know putting up the set painting the sets and all that kind of thing i I can definitely see this at the end of the school year Mm -hmm. where that's just about just about starting to to happen and you need that you need that that in the backdrop that beautification to so that when you do present that play it's it's ready to go yeah so it it can be positive you can be working on those beautification projects that you're not yet ready to show Mm. the general public i really like that actually particularly because it's in a martian sign so it wants to do something physical and um Mm. nice very nice. nice. April 29th, Venus moves into her own house of Taurus. And this is the this is the first house, and this is the house of self. So this is um, you know, she's she's got all of her essential dignity. She has all of the tools that she needs to get accomplished what she wants to get accomplished, whether this is a new haircut, um, a, a wardrobe redone, or you know, just changing anything about yourself. You're gonna have this is you know, Venus is the benefic. So this will be some good things with, um, you know, coming to you uh, after April 29th, hopefully before, but they'll be (laughs) more pronounced April 29th (laughs) and, 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 and for that until, until May 23rd. So yeah, this is a really good time for, um, you know, those haircuts, you know, you can probably get a haircut and not regret it. Um, Dye your hair if you wanted to. Just change yourself up, do whatever you wanted to do. Um, you but you it should it should work out to your benefit with Venus in your first house. Nice. And from the 23rd of May, Venus moves into Gemini in your second house. So this is a really nice house because I mean it's your personal finances and income, it's your resources. Uh, Venus is a benefic, so she often brings good things. So, yeah, you might have a bonus at this time. Maybe 
you know, there's a bonus at work or you win a small win on a lottery or something, or, you know, maybe somebody gifts you something nice. So, yeah, nice time. Um, yeah. When June 17th comes around, Venus is going to be moving into your third house, and that's the house of cancer. This is the house where you uh, you have all your 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 feelings, um, but not the cancer. Um, it, it could have a lot more. It could have a lot to do with your feelings because that is the cancer rules that house. But Venus moving into this, this is a, a lot to do with your community. This is a beautification projects, um, maybe even a social. Uh, kind of engagement with your brothers and sisters if you have siblings you know invite them over for a picnic or um you know a, a get together this is a this is community and, and a benefit to it so that's that's going to be very nice yeah very nice just nice time with everyone you kind of run into in an everyday kind of basis really just a nice time when it's in the third I think and from the 11th of July, Venus moves into Leo in your fourth house. So the fourth house is our home, our family, most particularly our parents uh, and real estate matters. So this is a great time to, you know, beautify your house in some way or, you know, whatever, you know, maybe it's just your room. Maybe, you know, you're still at home or you know, sharing with people, but, you know, even if it's just, you know, some new bed linen or, you know, something to hang on the wall or something, you know, you want to beautify where you're um, living. And, um, yeah, just a great time. Usually Venus brings, makes it more harmonious with people associated with the house. So, you know, good time with family, most particularly parents usually. So that should be nice. And then August 4th, Venus is going to move into Virgo. And this is your fifth house. And this is the fifth house of the things that you create as um, children or artwork. This also could be things that you do for pleasure. So this could be a benefit of, um, uh, you know, going to uh, a, an arena game, something that you would do with hobbies, like a, a sports event. This you might you might get you know tickets to a sports event and enjoy it. So this is a good time for Venus in Libra. She's in her own. Or, sorry, Venus in Virgo. Um, this is this is uh, she's in her she's in her um, joy here. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. She's in her joy here, and uh, she should have be able to work um, some benefit into your life. Yeah. Come August 4th. Unfortunately, she is in fall in Virgo, but um, like Donna said, the fifth house is where she has a joy, so they might help cancel each other out a little bit. So, oh boy. <laughs> uh, from the 29th of August, Venus moves into Libra, which she rules. So she's strong here, uh, same as when she's in Taurus. So this is a nice time. It's in the sixth house. So this is the house of our pets. It's also associated with those that work for us, employees can often be those that we work with. And it uh, encompasses people that work for others or service to others first responders, policemen, fire people, uh, paramedics, doctors, nurses, all that sort of thing. So, yes, you know, this could be just a nice harmonious time with uh, colleagues or employees. It can be a great time to beautify where you work, particularly if your work doesn't feel particularly like a career if it feels like you know I do this to get the money so I can live and let's face it a lot of us do the sixth house and the tenth house are both kind of associated with work but tenth tends to be more career orientated quite often but sixth house can sometimes be at work as well so look this could be you know a bonus through work this could be you know because Venus does bring good things and it is in Libra where she's able to work well 
to bring about her significations. Um, you know, or this could be, you know, you're beautifying that pet. Maybe, you know, that dog has um, overgrown that coat and needs a, you know, what what do they call it? Uh, a makeover. <laughs> grooming. Grooming. Yeah. I was thinking like, you know, the, the um, human version is a makeover. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, look, just a harmonious time. It is also the house of illness. Um, so maybe there is some benefit there. Maybe Venus. Venus is conducive to life. Same with um, Jupiter. If there have been issues with uh, health, maybe they improve somewhat at this time. That would definitely be something to look forward to. And then on September 22nd, Venus will be moving into Scorpio, the house of the, your, the, the seventh house. And Scorpio is, again, one of those houses where she's not real comfortable. She, um, Scorpio is ruled by Mars and she is the opposite of Mars. So she doesn't really have uh, the tools or the comfortness that she has to work in her, in her, ble in her best um, aspects. So, uh, in Scorpio, she is um, maybe a little hidden, um, but still, there should be some benefit in the Scorpio, the house of Scorpio. This is, things could be a little bit more romantic, maybe behind the scenes in seventh house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would think that there would be, um, you can get some, some Venusian qualities happening in Scorpio. Oh, yeah. I mean, Venus and Scorpio can be quite sexy, so. It can be a fun time. <laughs> uh, from 17th of October, we have Venus in Sagittarius. This is a fun sign for her to be in. Uh, it is in the 8th, though, which is not so fun. But look, Venus in the 8th, this could be, you know, your partner has um, some extra money and maybe you benefit somehow, you know. He's, he or she or they kind of say, I've got this extra money, let's go to Hawaii or you know, let's try out that expensive restaurant. It could be um, you benefit through things like loans, debts, uh, taxation. Maybe there's a bigger refund on that tax check than you expected. Maybe there is an inheritance that uh, you weren't expecting that comes forward. And, you know, maybe that is, well, certainly it would be helpful, but, you know, maybe um, it's especially helpful, you know, so, yeah, you know, Venus. Um, I can't really think of any people that are associated with the eighth house. It tends to be other people's money. Well, I suppose the partner. So, but even in that, it's the partner's money rather than, you know, partner themselves. And then November 11th, Capricorn, or Venus will be moving into Capricorn and Capricorn is your ninth house. So you should enjoy some kind of benefit associated with the ninth house. And the ninth house is, um, it works around the themes of publishing, uh, law, as well as higher education, even the esoteric subjects. So you might, you will probably see a, a benefit uh, a Venusian type of benefit, whether being inclusive or just simply, you know, getting something from from the ninth house. It's it's the house of, like I said, higher education. There could be definitely be a benefit either mm -hmm. with the higher education or law if you have if you've been working uh, with a legal case of some kind and you're a Taurus rising, and the verdict is about to come down, it might go in your favor. Yeah, or when Venus could, is in this house, or you could uh, benefit through foreigners or those with other beliefs or cultures, or you could be romance with a foreigner or somebody from a different culture. Uh, from December seventh, Venus will move into Aquarius in the tenth house. So this is the house of your career and public reputation. Uh, it's a nice house. This is you know the house of honors and rewards as well. So. Maybe, you know, there's just a bit of sweetness here. You know, maybe you're being recognized, even if it's just, you know, great job. Sometimes that goes a long way. Yeah, you know, things are more harmonious, uh, getting along better with authorities and those that you work with. 
nice placement. Uh, could be possibly a romance in the workplace or somehow related to either your public reputation or your career. And then the next planet we're going to be talking about is Mars. And Mars is the fourth planet out from the sun. So it moves a lot slower than Mercury and Venus. It's January 4th. It's going to be happening in your ninth house of Capricorn. It's only moving through half of the zodiac signs or almost a little bit more than half of the zodiac signs. So it's not, that's how, that's the rate of speed it goes. So being a slower planet, it's going to be in a sign for a little bit longer than the other planets that we were talking about. And uh, Mars is in charge of, of 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 leadership as where as well as severing um inflammation heat impatience uh accidents i would think when january 4th and it moves into your ninth house this could be around the subjects of publishing and foreigners and higher education as well as uh, the esoteric subjects. So this with Mars there could give you some drive to either pursue those interests or it could, you, you know, we all have free will and we can use Mars however we want. And it could also be, you know, where we, you know, get exiled into another country or, um, you know, have, you know, severing, um, maybe we're, not doing well in school and, or, you know, the upper, the upper education and we just drop out. So this might be a time for that because it does, Mars has a lot to do with that separation. It does. Uh, it is in Capricorn here though, where it's exalted. So it's very strong here. Um, you know, and Mars gets a bit of a bad rap. I mean, <laughs> You know, let's also talk about bravery and courage and ambition and drive. So, you know, hopefully, particularly with it in Capricorn, as long as it's not kind of um, making harsh aspects to planets in that house or, you know, other planets uh, in your chart, you know, while it's traveling through that house. Yeah, hopefully quite positive. But, you know, it is a malefic. It's not conducive to uh, life. And it does uh, have to do with severing and that. But, you know, we also do need bravery and action and drive, you know. February 13th, Mars moves into Aquarius in your 10th house. So, you know, maybe a little bit more ambition. You're actually doing more, not necessarily physical at work, though Mars is very physical, but it can be just more activity, more energy being put into that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mars can be a little bit aggressive. It can be fights and, you know, warfare and all that. So you may want to watch how you get along with people, particularly bosses, because bosses and authority figures are 10th house matters. Um, and the 10th house is a very visible house. So you really want people noticing that you're a workhorse rather than a <laughs> cranky old person <laughs> stirring up trouble and you know, starting fights. But, um, yeah, look, hopefully it's, um, you know, with all the planets, we try to um, give you ideas about how you can uh, use them positively. Or see them show up. Try to do the positive side of it. And on March 22nd, um, Mars will be moving into Pisces. And Pisces is, in, is your 11th house. And this is the house of... Uh, groups and associations as well as uh, your hopes and dreams so some dreams might be severed for this because they're they're not really what you want so uh, this is also uh, you know things where you could find some leadership in 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 pursuing a group activity this would be a good aspect for that March, starting March 22nd to April 30th and on April 30th, Mars moves into Aries, which it rules. So Mars is strong here. It will be in your 12th house, though, which is a little bit of a challenging house. This is the house of exile. It's also the house of our undoing. So you may want to try and watch your temper, uh, aggressiveness, rashness, because Mars can be rash and hasty. Uh, but it's an Aries, so we're hoping that it's a little bit more 
in better condition. It certainly is in better condition. We would hope that, I mean, Mars and Aries, it's just going to want to go. So you need to give it something to do. Um, the 12th house is, you know, places of confinement. So like prisons, hospitals, it's places of retreat. This would be a great time to work behind the scenes. It's a, a hidden and secretive house. So, yeah, if you're working on something, um, you know, Mars is going to move into your first on June the 8th. So from the 30th of April to the 8th of June, you know, maybe you've got a big project that you need to be working on. And um, this is the time to, you know, start doing all that behind the scenes machinations. And then June 8th, the Mar this, this Mars will be moving into your first house. And this is the house where it's the house of self. So, you know, you want to be watchful of, of accidents in this, when Mars is in this house. You also want to be, um, you know, be sure to kind of watch your temper. You know, you know, you don't know where that Mars is, if, unless you know when your ascendant is. <laughs> um, when Mars hits that, it could trigger some, you know, aggression as well as um, you want to, you want to use it as drive as, as Linda was saying earlier, give it something to do, give it, uh, you know, as a task for yourself. If you're, if you're trying to lose weight, this would be a good time to start Mars in, in with, with Mars in your first house. This would be a good time to start like a, a some kind of a workout regimen to, you know, utilize that Mars and get it working and get it acting in the way that it needs to be. That's what Mars is in your, your chart to begin with is to get you to be more active. So it's a good time to pay attention and June 8th, start getting active. Yeah. Uh, from the 20th of July, it's going to move into your second house of personal finances and uh, income and possessions. Mars in the second does have a habit of burning a hole in our pocket. So you might be uh, spending money just as quickly as you accumulate it uh, because there will be that drive to earn and, um, you know, gain possessions. But yeah, it's kind of like as soon as you get that money, it's kind of going straight out quite often. Um, yeah, but yeah big focus on finances at that time you know gaining them but you're also spending it just as quickly quite possibly goodness it's only there for five weeks <laughs> <laughs> and then september 4th you'll have that reprieve you can put your wallet away <laughs> <laughs> and um you know it, this uh, mars will be moving into the fourth or into your third house and this is this is the house where, where cancer is uh ruling so it's a little bit of moon so a little bit more emotional um but it with mars in your third house this is a good time to to you know to do that work of if you are looking for a new car it's it's good to get you know working there is the third house has a lot to do with transportation it has a lot to do with communication too so you'll have that drive you know going on with the third house and from the 3rd of november mars will move into leo in your fourth house fourth house is to do with our home and living situation it's also our family most particularly our parents and real estate matters so you may want to watch that you know there may be more of a tendency for fights particularly with parents at this time Great use of this energy would be to be doing something active, either with your parents or around the house. Great time to renovate, just do something that needs, you know, this could be something as simple as like a huge spring clean. Um, though I'm just looking at it, that's kind of what autumn for you. <laughs> but um, yes. it'll be it'll be it'll be spring down here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look, it, it's really good to spring clean your house twice, at least twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So look, great time to spring clean, but um, yeah, there may be a lot of activity in the house, in um, the home and to do all to do with your parents. Um, yeah. Just try and, you know, use that uh, Mars productively. We do have Very Mars nice. that will be, and Mars is going to retrograde in that house. So if you are renovating or doing something uh, to do with uh, your house or with your parents or 
with real estate matters, don't be surprised if you feel like you're kind of charging ahead and then you suddenly ran into a brick wall because Mars is going to retrograde. Mars just wants to go forward and he's going to be forced to go back. It only happens about every two years and this is the time when it's happening. So it will be frustrating, but everybody's going through it. Depending on um, their ascendant, it'll be in different houses, but everybody's going to be dealing with this frustration. So everybody's going to be kind of a little bit cranky. <laughs> Um, right. The retrograde shadow period will actually extend that from the 5th of October 2024 to the 2nd of May 2025. But the actual retrograde is from the 6th of December until the 23rd of uh, February 2025. Right. So we can almost go through almost the entire year without Mars going into retrograde. So. Mm. Don't have to worry about it till the end of the year. At least that we at least we have that to look forward to, <laughs> which is nice. And then the next planet we have um, we'll be speaking about is uh, Jupiter. And Jupiter is going to conjunct Uranus. Um, this is this is going to be happening in your first house um, with Tauruses. And Jupiter and Uranus together are it means it literally means big shocking you know something whatever it is um jupiter wants to do things uh generously jupiter wants to make it bring expanse jupiter wants to do something for the good of everybody where uranus is 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 the planet of let's get um some innovative ideas let's get some freedom let's get some breaking away let's get some shockingness put into it so putting those things together in the um in the first house could lead to quite a change in your life um so and this is going to be happening at 21 degrees of taurus so you know that is the that is the um the, the 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 key idea that we're that this is going to be happening is going to be happening April 20th is where this this shocking uh culmination when it finally does reach together is going to happen is is April 20th 2024 so that's going to be happening in the first house so look for some changes look for some big changes yeah and because it's the first house because it's happening in the first house it might be associated with um your health and vitality or your appearance so you know uranus is quite shocking so maybe you're going to shock people in some ways you know it's the first house it's all about you so maybe some of you have some things up your sleeve and um yeah it's gonna certainly wake some people up it would seem <laughs> And maybe hopefully bring some freedom to you. Maybe this is something that you've been working towards for a while. And then on May 25th, Jupiter will move into Gemini. And this is your second house. So you can look for expanse as an Anna benefic because Jupiter is the benefic planet into your second house. And that's your house of finance, uh, money, income, and and what, what supports you. So this is a very good, this will be a very good uh planetary change or, or sign change when when jupiter finally moves into gemini yeah very nice How about um, jupiter in your first house is not that bad well jupiter in your first yeah but the problem is you can put on weight sometimes <laughs> right yeah did you have any that yeah. last year thank god no but i did get babies i mean i, I had more, ah, more, nice. more 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 babies into my life so i'm happy nice. about that I, I'm I'm happy when Jupiter is the sign of baby, so <laughs> I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, well, I had Jupiter in my first. I had Saturn in there too. Saturn in the first often means that um, you're going to lose weight, but and Jupiter in the first can mean you put on weight. And I had them both in there at the same time, and Jupiter won. <laughs> you warned me, so I've been very I've been very on top of it. I'm like <laughs> it was like if I go up too much, I am like zip it. And we're done and we get back down. And then I'm like, okay, I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I But you warned me about that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, I benefited. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it helped that there was all those babies too. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, that'll keep you running too. Mm, mm. One little thing, and every year Jupiter retrogrades. So um, Jupiter is going to retrograde from the 9th of October until the 4th of February, 2025. Uh, it will be in your second house of uh, income and finances. So when Jupiter's retrograde, sometimes, you know, those big plans we have, they're kind of fantastic. You're so excited and enthusiastic about them. And then Jupiter retrogrades and, you know, maybe you are relying on some people and they're not able to help at this time or you just realize, oh, my goodness, it's going to take so much longer or so much more work. So particularly with some plans to do with maybe income, finances, um, buying a resource or, you know, having some assistance in some way, you may be a little bit disappointed at this time. So that's from the 9th of October to the 4th of Feb. But, you know, Quite often um, retrograde periods are beneficial in that, you know, because we've had to go back and reevaluate, we can kind of quite often come out with something better. So, you know, you were interested in buying this or doing that and you weren't able to, but maybe it's for the better in the long run because Jupiter is benefic and, you know, then Saturn. And Saturn is the next planet that we have um, that we're going to take a close look at. Saturn is going to stay in Pisces uh, in the 11th house, which is not so bad. Um, but it, it's it's going to be in your 11th house um, for the entire year. It's it, it, if Saturn is in charge of the restrictions, the 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 the. The, the rules, the the boundaries, the the nos, the time, the how the how long, how long will we be working? How hard will we be working? This is what Saturn rules. And um in the eleventh house, it's you don't want to have that restriction in your hopes and dreams and friends and 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 groups and activities. It's a it's a harder one. Uh I don't know anybody who is like saying, hey, yeah, let's have more nose in my life <laughs> <laughs> especially when it comes to hopes and dreams so uh i i'm sure there are worse places where it could be but saturn isn't as strong as it as it has been for these last four or five years when it was in aquarius and capricorn that was really strong and and uh I'll, I'll probably a lot of hard work and a lot of nose well we did have a lot of nose when saturn was in when Saturn was very strong, that's when COVID first came out. So that was yeah. a whole bunch of no's. Um, in Pisces, it's a little maybe less Saturn, uh, but still, it is Saturn, and it is it is the the planet of of rules and regulations, and you know how long it's going to be. So it, it is a a more somber planet. Saturn will retrograde. Uh, Saturn retrogrades every year. Yes, so Saturn will retrograde from the 29th of um, June until the 15th of November. And that will be in your 11th house because, as Donna said, it's going to be in your 11th house the whole year. Um, when Saturn's retrograde, those limitations and restrictions can seem a little bit more overwhelming. You know, um, it will also depend on whether you're a night chart or a day chart for you your natal chart too you know if you're a day chart person these saturn in general is easier to deal with whereas if you're a night chart born during the night you're probably going to find this a little bit more problematic you can use this as a time to go back and maybe ensure that okay you're trying to achieve this dream or ambition um, or something to do with groups or friends you know maybe it needs to be gone back over just to make sure that it's solid and dependable, you know. Maybe you want to, I don't know, let's just say you want to travel to Europe for, you know, you want to backpack for a year and you thought that was great, but then you found out, oh, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, maybe you can't do it for six months or something, but, you know, that time gives you uh, an opportunity to plan it better, to... um find better hotels or what do they call it when people just kind of backpack yeah backpacking options or maybe um you know you're able to 
you know, work out, oh, if I do this, I'm going to save more money, which, you know, Saturn likes to kind of restrict things. And, um, yeah, just make sure everything's right, you know, maybe, you know, ensure that you've got all the visas required or whatever. And, I mean, having said that, I'm just showing my, um, what is it in? It's in um, Pisces, <laughs> third house for me. But, um, yeah, traveling overseas and that, that would be more of a ninth house matter. But, I mean, if this is something that has been a dream and ambition, something that you've been really looking forward to, then that would be a hopes and dream. And, um, yeah, but this could also be to do with groups or networking or French friends. So, you know, maybe there's um, something that uh, sets you back and you kind of think, oh, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to overcome this? It's just too much. But ultimately, with all retrogrades, hopefully going over that old ground allows us to um, refine it and uh, do better. And then the next planet we're going to be talking about is Pluto. Um, and Pluto is the planet of transformation, the fire and the phoenix, the uh, what doesn't serve you, um, what isn't working, um, transformation. So I already say that. I probably did. Um, it's the planet of of get it out of your life if it's not working because we need to make room for the things that we want to be bringing into your life. So Pluto has that that kind of elimination um, type of vibe that is is with him and and it's 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 not fun and, and Pluto is the farthest planet that we have in our in our universe that we know about um and it's it's a it's a it's a planet that is is willing to go into depths it's a planet that wants to go deep and and wants to do that um you know how does it function? You know, is a, a, a you know a little kid taking apart an entire clock would be a very Plutonian, you know, and rebuilding it in a different way would be a very Plutonian um, manifestation of this. So, so Pluto is going to re-enter Aquarius January twentieth, and it will it'll be in there all the way until we had Pluto in Aquarius from the 23rd of March to the 11th of June in 2023. So that was kind of like a little bit of a taste of um, Pluto in Aquarius. So from the 20th of January, it's going back in there again. So, and that will be in the 10th house of Korea and public reputation. So that will be interesting. So if you can think back uh -huh. to um, March to June, uh, 2023 sort of things that were happening career-wise or to do with honors and rewards because um yeah you know maybe there's some sort of transformation going on there you were talking about like the kid with a clock I kind of quite like the idea um that some people have suggested of like a butterfly you know it's got to go into that chrysalis and it kind of, you know, it's all confined and wrapped up and it kind of goes, kind of, well, disintegrates into kind of goo, but then it kind of regenerates into the butterfly, you know. It's a nice symbolism. It can feel pretty hard if it's um, hitting any planets uh, at the time, though. So, but yes, um. Pluto is not done with Capricorn yet, though. So from the 1st of September 2024, it's going to go back into Capricorn. And um, all the uh, people with planets at the late degrees of the cardinal signs can hardly wait because it's going to come back and smack them about. And, um, yeah, but from the retro back in Capricorn, so from the 1st of September to the 19th of November, uh, Pluto will be back in your ninth house. So matters to do with foreigners higher education law publishing uh religion beliefs other cultures things that are different things that are not your astrology. usual thing yeah esoteric subjects astrology tarot uh all these sorts of topics you know maybe um you know and because pluto is revisiting this and this is the final time that pluto is going to be in that house you know, from 
1st of September to the 19th of November. It's clearing out after that. It's going to go back into Aquarius and, you know, it's not going to come back to Capricorn for another 250 years or so. So it's cleaning up whatever it started in um, the ninth house. But, you know, if you don't have any planets at the late degrees of the um, cardinal signs, maybe you won't notice it, notice it as much um, because it does move so slowly. It's always going to be somewhere in your chart. It's when it kind of hits off on personal planets in your natal chart that you tend to notice it more. Pluto Pluto taps you on the shoulder lightly. And if you're not listening, we'll, we'll, we'll punch you in the arm. And <laughs> then if you're not listening, by the time it's trying to leave the sign, it will whack you across the face. So try to pay attention to what Pluto is trying to get you to get rid of out of your life or transform. Yeah. Because Pluto does give you hints. It's just, and it'll, it'll be real upsetting if you haven't been paying attention and all of a sudden you're, you know, really changed and, and just not ready for it. Yes. Well, when Pluto um, re-enters uh, Aquarius on the 19th of November, it's, it's going to be there until 2043. So you've got a lot of time to get used to it. So those people who are getting whacked across the face have not been paying attention. Those ones who have Pluto and Capricorn. Yeah, I don't know. I think sometimes I think sometimes he starts it. I really do. <laughs> I don't. I think I think sometimes Pluto can just you know. I sometimes I don't think it's about. Yeah, I I think sometimes just bad things happen, and you know it can be often illustrated through Pluto or Mars or Saturn, or Uranus, and even Neptune. Yeah, I think all of those outer planets have a but but Pluto has a comfortableness to them reputation, you know, and you know like you said it can be like um, the Phoenix from the Flames, you know, that's all very evocative and very nice but you know you could have died first that's pretty horrific god yeah. i got really depressing <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes and and look it doesn't mean that you know it's going to be horrific for everybody or anything but like you know it, it can be a huge transformation and transformation isn't always comfortable and you know it's going to depend on what planets it's connecting to it's going to depend on um you know, what houses it's in and, um, you know, if it's making connections with your natal planets. And like Donna said, you know, maybe for a lot of people, you know, if you haven't been paying attention, but I personally think that um, sometimes they just come out of the blue and just whack you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it, 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 it wants you to transform. It wants you to change. Yeah, well, Pluto hit to your other planets could give you a startling uncomfortable change yeah but it moves on it'll move on in 2044 <laughs> yes it's a very very long cycle it takes about 242 years to go through um the whole zodiac so it's a long time and actually the U.S. is going through its um, Pluto return. It's coming back to where Pluto was when um, it had its uh, War of Independence. Yes, and we did a video about that. We did. Indeed. Learning the houses through the sibling chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the fun one. This is all about the eclipses. The eclipses are, um, you know, as you know, you should not be looking at them with your eyes without protection so um the first lunar eclipse will happen march 25th 2024 it'll happen at five degrees seven minutes of libra and it will be happening in your sixth house now the sixth house is the house of um health as well as uh your service or what you do daily so this could be eclipsing things in and out this is a lunar eclipse it might be more of an internal feeling where the solar eclipse is going to happen on April 8th of 2024. And this is going to be a total solar eclipse. And it's going to be happening at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries in your 12th house. And that is um, going to be a total eclipse. And uh, Linda and I, we, we use the um, 
Predictive Astrology, The Eagle and the Lark, written by Bernadette Brady for these for our our, our eclipse bible and the <laughs> signification of the first eclipse the one on march 25th is going to be um about inventiveness and flashes of genius this is i am literally reading this right out of her book um so get it if you with i'm sure you would want to learn more about it um, the flashes of genius are the hallmark of this Sarah series. The individual have will have intuitive leaps, insights, good ideas, visions, or vivid dreams. This newfound inspiration will pull the person away from his or her social life or relationship, thereby causing strain in the private life. This is a time when a person needs to be free, if only for a few weeks. And that is the first one where the one that's going to be happening in April has a little bit less of uh, the April e time. eclipse. And it has to do with separation and loss to be parted, to finish something and to feel sad at its completion. Physical injury is also possible though overstraining one's through overstraining one's strength. This is not the time to undertake strenuous physical activities is what it says in her book for the, um, the uh, Sura series on, on, on the meanings of them. So this is a, the, the first one is, is very, you know, upbeat and, you know, in, you know, in ingenious and, and, and innovative ideas. And the other one is a little bit more somber. Yeah. It's interesting that that first solar eclipse, the 8th of April one is um, kind of about freedom. And not long after on the 20th of April, we have that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. It will be in Taurus, the next sign over, but that whole, I kind of imagine that maybe as we come up close to that uh, conjunction of Jupiter Uranus, maybe there's just going to be like a lot of people kind of almost edgy, like there's kind of a need for freedom or, you know, yeah, freedom from restriction, whatever that may be in your life. So that could Probably be quite that. interesting. Yeah. The lunar eclipse in September, the 17th of September, 2024, will be the first of the Pisces eclipses. Um, that will be in your 11th house of groups, friends, and organizations and your hopes and dreams. Uh, eclipses do tend to kind of um, just shake things up. You know, it can be, you know, sudden starts and uh, sudden endings. Lunar eclipses are associated, well, they happen on a full moon when the node is close to it. Yeah, they are often associated with endings, but it can also be a high point or a culmination. If you don't have planets, natal planets, uh, close or aspecting the degrees of the eclipse, you may feel it more as a full moon rather than a lunar eclipse or a new moon rather than a solar eclipse. Oh, with the solar eclipses too, uh, we did do um, a podcast about solar eclipses as well as lunar eclipses. But with the solar eclipses, they come in cycles. They're kind of parts of a family which tends to move uh, every 18 years. So you may find, particularly if it is making impact on your chart, so that's if you've got planets at 19 degrees of the cardinal signs. So that's Aries, Libra, Cancer and Capricorn or 10 degrees of the cardinal signs. So again, Aries, Libra, Cancer and Capricorn. You may find that there's something happening in your life that has some sort of linking to something that happened 18 years ago. So that would be 2006. And let me just see what 18 years prior to that is. Prior to that, it would be 1988. Uh, prior to that, 1970. Prior to that, 1952. So it may not be identical, but it may be something of a continuation, you know, that somehow it's related. And it's more likely to be something that's significant if this is kind of hitting something in your chart. If you've got nothing at the cardinal signs, you know, this might be nothing to you. So don't think, oh, my goodness, it's going to happen. It's going to be horrible. Um, you know, and sometimes eclipses are good, you know. They shake things up and, yeah, uncover things too. 
you know, sometimes things come to light at this time. Uh, that could be interesting with the uh, 8th of April one because it's going to be in your 12th house of hidden and secrets, secret matters. So, and it's also the house of our undoing. Oh, that's the other thing too. The, Octo the October so solar eclipse. Tell again. The October solar eclipse is the last of the Libra eclipses, but we still have and one more Aries eclipse in March 2025. So eclipses they kind of go on an axis. You know they're kind of bouncing between uh, two signs, but they are also moving into you know a new axis as well. So we've got the first of the Pisces Virgo on the 17th of September, but we aren't finished with um, the Aries Libra eclipse and uh, Nexus until uh, March 2025. Really nice to look forward to. Yeah. Very interesting for a year. Mm, mm, very much so. So that's your year ahead, uh, Taurus. Uh, we also do. Oh, new moon and full moon horoscope so if that's something that you're interested in and if you're listening to this you probably will be uh please like and subscribe we go through and do horoscopes for every new and full moon and we look at the aspects coming up so if there's something that you kind of thought, oh that's interesting you know when it gets close to the time we will be actually looking into that in more depth happy new year's taurus yes hope 2024 is good to you Ciao. Okay.